Hi everyone! It's beautiful out today so I was thinking I would give you a look at our garden. It is all put away for the winter now um, but it's so nice out. I think I will show you how I put her to bed and and take a look. So right here is what I refer to as our straw bed. We actually just started this bed this year um, after learning about the Ruth Stout method of doing really deep uh, amounts of hay. Some people use straw. So very early before the snow was even gone, uh, probably like March, I was out here with bales of hay building this up because I was so excited to try out this new method and honestly it um, for its first year first season I'm quite impressed I wasn't expecting much I because it takes time to break down and build up that soil but I had squash in here and zucchini and I had kajari melons over on those uh, cattle panel trellises there and they did such a great job so what I did here is I got a bunch more hay and straw and I also took some leaves. I didn't chop up the leaves. Uh, I know a lot of people say, you know, you should really chop them up, um, but I didn't have time. So Max and Sam did some raking and they dumped all the leaves in here and I'm kind of experimenting. I'm going to leave them and let them do their thing over winter. and kind of see what the soil is like um, in the in the springtime so we'll see I just didn't have time to really chop them up finely it's one big experiment so over here I want to show our um, here's one of our peach trees we started from one of our peach pits uh, from last year this is a Carolina Bell peach tree very cool we it was another experiment we weren't sure how it would do Here's another peach tree that we started from uh, one of the pits. And another, and another. So I put them in here to see how, how they would do. Kind of another experiment. <laughs> we do a lot of experimenting when it comes to gardening and here, and that's kind of one of the best ways that I learn. I try to learn from others on YouTube. I read books, but I learn by doing. Sometimes that's the best way. So this looks like an absolute disaster. Um, I promise you there is a reason for this madness that I concocted over here. It's not a junkyard, promise. This is actually an extension of that straw hay bed that I created this summer. So what I did is I put down a lot of cardboard and uh, builder's paper that you can buy a roll of at you know the big box stores it's usually like I don't know 10 to 15 dollars for a big roll and I rolled it out lay down some cardboard and then I put a bunch more hay straw over top and that really packed down a lot it was I had this massive pile of hay and straw and after just a few weeks it went down to just a like an inch it really really broke down so what I did is when I cleaned out this garden I took all of the dead plants minus the tomatoes and squash plants and stuff like that because I don't want to pass along any diseases I took them and I just threw them on top of the hay and the straw after I put those dead plants over top of all that hay and straw I threw compost over top that I've had over in our compost pile. I just threw it on top, kind of helped weight down all these dead plants and add more soil and, and matter to, to the bed I'm trying to make here. Now, I had a lot of black plastic, thick black plastic, and I was gonna take it to the dump and I said, well, why don't I just use it this season Put it over top kind of the bigger areas in here where stuff really needs to break down and overwinter it. 
So I pulled out all the scrap and then I weighed it down with landscaping bricks and logs and rocks. And then I had more cardboard. I said, all right, well, I can put that down and that'll decompose over the winter. Anything I could put in here to add more matter into this bed and to help break things down over the winter months was really my focus. And again, one massive experiment. So here is my regular garden that we started about 10 or so years ago with one itty bitty raised bed made out of cedar logs that my parents had brought up from their home. And I believe it was located right here, one little itty bitty bed. And that little itty bitty bed has actually um, kind of rotted away, turned into mulch, and it's, uh, we have a new one in its place. However, the garden itself has transformed into something I would have never ever imagined it would have. That one little seed that was planted in me all those years ago about gardening and growing my own food for the family, it blossomed into something much, much bigger that I wasn't expecting. So in this corner, we have, I think Sam showed you on the tour. He did an excellent job. He's probably a better tour guide than I, I am, but I'll kind of give you the rundown here. We have a pawpaw tree that I kind of had to protect because the deer hopped the fence and they were munching on it. So I wanted to give it a little added protection. I have lots of herbs planted and sprawled around and I got super creative. Um, this spring, I was really itching to get in the dirt, took rocks and logs from our property and created these wildflower beds. And right now they're all put to bed, uh, covered with either some hay or straw or leaves or, or wood chips. We're a big uh, user of wood chips. And I created these wildflower beds. There's some mint in this pot here. And these little areas here. And I noticed such a jump in the amount of pollinators that came to my garden this year and it was absolutely fantastic. Now coming over this way here, I know some of you already know the boys actually created this out of some tractor piece they found back in our woods. And we got some spray paint and used all different colors. And we made a sunflower. And I stuck it on one of our green uh, tea posts. And it looks like it has a stem. It was like made for my garden. I loved it. So I made it a kind of a center centerpiece. And I took some rocks. And I found a bunch of heart-shaped rocks. And all these logs. And I potted up plants. They're not there right now and created this little piece you yeah, and it it's so nice to have that in here that the boys created and then there are more wildflowers over this way that i had really um, were beautiful this summer really really nice there are some blueberry plants Still learning how to get my blueberry plants to be effective and, you know, growing fruit. That is something I'm still learning how to do. You know, trial and error. On days like today, um, this has got to be one of my most favorite places to be. It's so calm and so peaceful. And Joe always uh, makes fun of me in a sweet way uh, that I could be lost up here for hours. And he literally has to come grab me because I won't answer my phone. I won't answer texts because I'm just in my own little world up here doing whatever needs to get done, whether it's weeding or picking or the past couple weeks pulling things out and mulching and preparing our beds for next spring so that they're all ready and that the soil is super healthy. 
you know, days like today, uh, I, I can't keep myself out of this garden. So if we were to walk this way, you can see I have two cattle panel trellises that I set up and I grew cucumbers on them the, this season and they did such a great job. And I got another raised bed over this way. I grew some radishes there along with the cucumbers and they did very well there. Got pots of chives that are, you know, dying back. It's been getting nice and chilly here. I, we are in zone 5B in upstate New York. Uh, we're just outside of the capital district here. Now, oh, our, um, our garden is actually split. You can see we have lots of pea stone. And most of the garden was pea stone for quite some time. And then we started learning more about wood chips and the back to Eden gardening method. And we started implementing different techniques and experimenting and playing with all these ideas. So part of our garden now is primarily wood chip based. And this was our first season growing food in the ground where we put these wood chips and I was very happy and I was very pleasantly surprised with how well stuff did even though the wood chips hadn't fully composted down we did have manure in with our wood chips that does help to break those wood chips down the carbon nitrogen ratio which is great you know and next year it will the soil will be even better I did add another couple inches this year. That was a lot of work. Hauling it up with the tractor, scooping it in, scooping it out. But in the end, it's going to be worth it, I think. We do have some garlic in here. I planted, I think about 75 to maybe 100 cloves of garlic. And we have different types. Um, this front row here is elephant garlic. And then we got uh, music garlic and chestnut red garlic, I think is the other one. I may be mispronouncing that, but we got garlic all through here. And you can see this little green sprouts. I was very happy to see that. And we even got a little bit over here in this bed. Some awesome garlic. Like I said before, the awesome deer around here hopped our fence, even though it's a six foot fence, and they munched on my comfrey. I bought some crowns of, I guess you would call them crowns, of comfrey off Etsy. And they were awesome and big and huge leaves, and the deer came in and munch, munch, munch. So I'm not too worried though. I think they'll grow back and next spring I'll have some awesome comfrey to make into a natural fertilizer. Now I have another cattle panel trellis. I grew uh, rattlesnake beans on and those Chinese noodle beans. Those are really cool. I'd never grown those before. Another experiment and I loved them. They were awesome to, to cook with. I did a lot of, I roasted them actually with like zucchini and squash and all stuff like that. And they came out really good. So this is a way you can see I have another, actually a raised bed within the wood chip area with more cedar logs. My parents live a little south of us in New York and their property is uh, loaded with cedar and it's wonderful. It's a great resource for building some raised beds with. So every once in a while, you know, uh, my parents will load us up with some logs and we can use them to make more beds. So we kept that bed within the wood chip area since it's had established soil in it. It was really nice. And we're gonna go under another cattle panel trellis. There, I had peas growing on that one. And then here's another cedar log and rock uh, raised bed 
we got very creative when we made our raised beds. We tried to use what we had to save money. And if we have resources available, we, we try to use them. It may not be the most perfect, but it's our own little unique way. We have another pawpaw tree over there, protected from the deer, and a nice big catnip plant behind it. I actually watch the cats uh, from our house. Our house is way over that way, but cats will come by and you can see them pawing at this plant from outside the fence line. It's kind of funny. Um, but I don't mind those cats coming around because they keep the rodent and pests down. So they're kind of helping me out. They can have some catnip. We have more raised beds from cedar logs here. That raised bed there is made from uh, lumber that we purchased. Those beds that we have are few and far between though. Most of our raised beds are made from cedar logs or rocks, stuff like that. Here is the almighty elderberry. Um, it is massive. I, we have no issues growing elderberry here. I put this in shortly after we moved in, um, about 11 or so years ago. And yeah, apparently they, they really enjoy our soil and our property. I hack them down to at least half their size and they come back like crazy so can't complain about that uh, we we really enjoy making elderberry jam i make a peach elderberry jam and that's really tasty along this side here we have blackberries i um, did prune them back uh, they were a bit wild and crazy this year so i wanted to definitely cut them back i want to keep them as healthy as possible the boys being a TP they made this year. We grew a couple different types of beans that we dried, like uh, succotash beans, uh, good mother stollard. They grew on there and they did a great job. I used grow bags and put soil in them and that worked very well. And then here is another bed I used for wildflowers. It's all covered up with leaves and some hay. There's another cattle panel trellis. I grew Malabar spinach, red Malabar spinach on that this year. And that was lovely. It was so pretty. We didn't eat it. Um, we had a lot of other types of greens we were eating, but it was very pretty and very uh, nice to have in the garden. And our blackberries really enjoyed having this trellis. They reached over top of it. It was quite impressive. Now, uh, we do have raspberry, raspberries over here. I know that's a big no-no. You're not supposed to plant blackberries and raspberries close together, I believe, for disease reasons. We were really naive when we first put it in this garden, and I was like, well, let's stick the berries in next to each other. And honestly, I've not, I haven't had any issues, but preferably you should not have your raspberries and your blackberries near each other uh, just to be on the safe side. The boys and I earlier this year in the late spring made a hoviculture bed and I was super, super tall and it really broke down a lot over the course of the season. And now it's surrounded by wood chips to help it even more. Um, but our hugelkultur bed literally was a base of rotten logs that we pulled out of the, our woods and then topped that with leaves and um, veggie scraps that I typically would put in compost. We added a lot of different decomposing organic matter, whether it was wood, leaves, compost, pine needles that were already starting to, to decompose and break down. As you can see, we're surrounded by pine trees. Absolutely surrounded. Some birch and, and maples here, but we have this massive amount of pines, which we love. So we use them. 
we, we do use them. And that there is our hugelkultur bed, which has some strawberry plants, some sage in there, and a little itty bitty bit of Swiss chard left over. Over this away, we have some kale still hanging on. This is that, I think, red Russian kale, uh, or ragged jack, it's also called. And despite the frost, despite the deer, <laughs> it keeps on, on going, which is great. Yet another cattle panel trellis. I went cuckoo over them this year. I, they're awesome, they're beautiful, they're functional. We got a little bit of cabbage. That's a, the Chinese cabbage. And I had some massive issues with caterpillars. So I've been learning how to use BT, the bacteria, to help combat them. Another thing I'm really starting to learn more about is organic pest control. And in here, I had peas growing. I had those polar bear zinnias. They were gorgeous. I'm definitely growing more of those next year. So that is pretty much the, the regular, our, our first garden, our regular garden, our massive garden, or as the boys, you know, call it my obsession. But it's my own little slice of heaven, I guess you could say. And in here, I did forget to show you, this is our asparagus that we put in in this spring. They're um, two-year-old crowns. So I think we should be able to start harvesting within the next year or two. But this year, we just let them grow and let them do their thing so that they're very healthy plants um, for many years to come. So yeah, that's about the the short end of it that's my garden my baby my obsession like the boys say but uh, it's a work in progress I'm still learning I don't do everything perfect I make a lot of mistakes but I truly learn by doing things trying it out seeing how it works out for us so I'm always looking for more information I'm always reading more watching lots of YouTube videos and learning from that. Yeah, so hopefully uh, when I'm posting my videos and showing you what I'm doing, we can learn together. And maybe by me doing something that does or doesn't work, that can help you in your garden or give you an idea or tip of something that you were thinking about. Uh, we can learn together. It's a journey, right? <laughs>